Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the uh, regular meeting of the School Committee of the Town of Foxborough. It's January 8th, 2018. Happy New Year. Tonight we have a relatively uh, short, shorter agenda. They aren't all like this. I know. As you know. <laughs> um, we're going to recognize any visitors. We're going to approve some minutes from our last meeting. We're then going to give our new superintendent, Dr. Burdos, and our new assistant superintendent, Mrs. Mello, an opportunity to, to say hello and welcome to the district. We all know you, but I thought it was appropriate to give you a chance to say anything you'd like to say. Your first official yes. presiding meeting. Um, and then we have a teaching and learning highlight from Ms. Arcacha and team of students. Um, we are going to then continue our discussion of the FY19 budget, which of course we're in the primary budget season right now. Um, Dr. Bardos and Mr. Yukna. Uh, Mr. Yukna will give us uh, our first discussion of the capital improvement plan draft for FY19. We have a couple of donations to accept, and we have a third one actually just received today that Janet, being right on top of things, was able to uh, distribute to us. So we will we'll cover that one as well, and then we'll take up any other matters. So uh, to begin, any visitors who want to be heard? <laughs> Seeing none. We'll uh, take up our minutes. These are the regular meeting minutes of December 18th. I know Janet distributed a new copy tonight to everybody. Janet, what were the changes? Just minor, I know you said. Yeah, no content change. It was a name correction and just a dot instead of a hyphen. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Any comments from anybody? I thought I they were no fine. Changes. Make a motion that we approve the minutes. Thanks, Chris. I will second. Go ahead. I will second the motion. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? 5-0. Thank you. I just want to make a quick comment on, uh, I'm going to use the minutes as an excuse, but one of the things that we covered at the last meeting that is covered in the minutes is a, uh, obviously the, the big award from the Massachusetts Association of School Committees, their outstanding school partner, Foxborough Cable Access. Um, we had a wonderful presentation that night. And I made a, an omission that um, I should have thought of then, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix it now, uh, which was I, I, I made several thanks during our presentation, and I thanked uh, Mike Everson, who once again is in the, the back room tonight running the cable for us, and I failed to thank Frank McDowell, who was in that room for a number of meetings before Mike was, covers, uh, covered a lot of the selectmen's meetings, covered a lot of our meetings, and Frank was probably watching, and Frank, if you were, I, I hope you will accept my apology, but I want to thank personally Frank McDowell for his many uh, meetings of service when he's been in the back room running the, the cameras and the cable and all that good stuff as well. So, Frank, thank you. Okay, uh, Dr. Burdos. Dr. Burdos. <laughs> <laughs> well, good evening. I think we've had a, uh, a great transition already to uh, our new superintendent and our new assistant superintendent. If anyone has had uh, their head in the sand for the last several months, they, uh, they should be reminded that you both have a long history with Foxborough Schools. This is a seamless transition for us. We're very fortunate. And I know on behalf of the committee, we want to welcome you to the table. Thank you. Um, Allison, for the first time at this side of the table, yes. you're a frequent guest at that end of the table. <laughs> Indeed. But I just thought you might like to say hello and give you a chance to say anything on your mind, maybe the school district goals, continuing the goals and the progress, or anything else you guys would like to share. Sure. Well, one of the things I had um, someone asked me recently, and it was the question about goals, and for the new year, as most people are thinking with the calendar year, that what are your new goals? And I think that's one of the um, things that's a beautiful thing with our situation actually right now is we think about the school year, not so much the calendar year. And so when January rolls around, we are in full swing of implementing our goals. And I think that not losing the momentum and being able to know all of the players, if you will, one of the things that Allison and I were talking about earlier today was we might be in new roles, but if we have questions based on our new roles, we know who the people are and we know where to go to ask the questions. And that really helps in not um, losing the moment momentum and being able to dive right into the new role. At the same time, we're finding that with um, her position not being filled, we're in the process of that, 
but really, again, the strength of our team and working together and letting everyone in our team know that we're, we're not going to miss a step because we're going to work together and make sure that all of the goals, the district goals that we have laid out, that we're able to continue to do what's best for kids and hopefully not miss any steps and um, not have any more blizzards. <laughs> <laughs> Because um, usually January is the time when you really, the momentum's going and you jump right back in in the classrooms and you get so much accomplished starting in, in January and moving forward. So I think that's one of the great things is being able to work with our, our people that are in place and um, everyone's been so supportive mm -hmm. and really saying whatever you need to help um, us in however, whatever capacity we need too. So it's exciting. We, we're looking forward to... Um, some of the things like with the borough project that's mm -hmm. coming up, the technology plan, we were at technology steering committee today and really kind of fleshing out the rest of that draft to bring to you at the next meeting and what that looks like and really talking about how it meets all of our district goals and the strategic plan goals, it mirrors it so much. And I think that, I mean, Allison can talk to um, that where she was new to that today, but it, it really does mirror nicely and um, shows what we're all working on and that that even professional development, everything it aligns really well. So it's nice having us in the district and that we've had the history together because you can see how those dots connect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, For me today, it was my first time at Tech Steering Committee. It was one of the few committees that I haven't participated on in the past. <laughs> and um, it was just in one day, talking about connecting the dots, having been a longstanding member of the Professional Development Committee, just to see how much that committee informs the work we do on the professional development committee and having relationships with all but one person at the table who I didn't really know that works at the high school that I got to meet, which was great. Um, there was no time lost getting, I thought I was really going to have to sit and get up to speed, but I'm familiar with so many of the initiatives and we have such great communication between all of us. So that was exciting actually to add, I mean, who really, you think, oh, another committee, but I really enjoyed it because it was a little missing piece of the puzzle. Even though I'm well informed, actually being there as part of the discussion was fantastic. Um, it's interesting that we haven't filled my position yet because I'm still uh, maintaining the responsibilities of that role right now and trying at the same time to transition into some of the thing only some of the things that Amy's doing right now because she's helping me. So that's because we have this great relationship is really helpful as well. And I think it's given the teachers, at least they've told me, a sense of calm that it's not this major transition all at once, that they're not going to feel a huge change right now. Um, we might feel it, but that's okay. It, yeah. It's our job to keep that's it right. from them. So um, this is a very exciting time. And I'm, this is very strange to be sitting here. But <laughs> it's I Debbie to be on the other side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> and Debbie's on the couch probably. Yeah, so. watching. I'm yes. sure she's watching. With a kitty on her lap. Yes. <laughs> so thank you for the warm welcome. I appreciate it. It is a warm welcome. We're really glad to have both of you here. We're fortunate. Thank you. And if Debbie is watching, she's smiling. She is smiling. <laughs> that uh, she's for two reasons. Number one, she's not here. <laughs> <laughs> but number two, I know she's proud of both of you. Um, and I hope, you know, I hope the Texans are proud of Dr. Burdos, achieving superintendent. I think that's an honor. Well earned. You'll do a great job. We know that. Thank you. It's exciting. And, and speaking of Debbie, we've both been protégés, if you will, and had her as a mentor over the years. And so many other, whether it's principals or directors, and you really learn something from everyone. It, everyone has something different to offer, and it's a matter of listening and hearing what that is. And um, it makes a difference in the way you approach things. And I think that it makes our relationship stronger because we know that we can go to anyone. That's right. And have those questions answered or to have someone really stretch your thinking about something, too. And so I think it's a good time to really have those conversations and to think about she's going to look at things that I've been doing for the last seven years with new eyes, which is great because she's going to ask questions that maybe I didn't think of. And so we'll learn with each other and um, continue to move the district forward. Anyone from the committee want to make any comments? Well, I want to thank you two ladies very, very much for helping create the wonderful send-off that we all celebrated with Debbie last Friday night. You were very instrumental in how beautiful it was and how smoothly it ran. And it was ever so clever passing the baton. <laughs> it wasn't it? <laughs> That's all you. Chapeau Literally. Literally. That was, yes. <laughs> Par excellence. <laughs> I, I think one of the things that truly came out that night was the outpouring of what Debbie has done for the district and how it's appreciated and um, 
all of the people that are involved, you could see by the outpouring of people that were there. There was a, a large attendance, which mm -hmm. was great to see. But thank you. I will echo that. And I will point out that as, as was discussed Friday night, Debbie's tenure started with a hurricane and yours has started with, with a blizzard. <laughs> so there's continuity, there's even more continuity there. Yeah. So, but I'm, I'm confident that there are very good, that, well, putting the weather aside, there are very good things to come with the two of you at the helm, so thank you. I think we've said all along, it's a, it's a great place to be. <clears throat> so it's exciting to take on the new chapter. Definitely. I'd like to welcome you both. I've worked with both of you many, many times, uh, since you since the beginning and you since back in the Ahern days mm -hmm. and continue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm really excited <coughs> to see what you guys bring to the table. I, I'm, nothing will shock me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are incredible. Thank you. I'll, I'll just close this part of the agenda then by saying um, from my own perspective that we will miss Debbie. Mm -hmm. uh, she provided tremendous service to the town and we spoke about that on Friday night, but you know, just looking forward, I can't think of two more uh, intelligent uh, women to run this district. Um, professional, Amy, is a word I would use, Allison, to describe both of you, uh, and just really, you know, creative and thoughtful. And um, from my perspective, those are all great attributes uh, that we'll benefit from in terms of your leadership. So. Uh, we do look forward to new perspectives, new ideas, and yet continuity of all the good stuff that's been going on. So welcome. Thank you. Officially. Thank you. Again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would you like to introduce the teaching and learning highlight? I would love to. I'm so excited to have Miss Kelly Arcacha, uh, uh, with, along with many juniors from Foxborough High School. I'll have them introduce themselves here in a minute. But um, what I'd like to point out first as far as this teaching and learning highlight when we talk about what are our goals and what our plan is going forward, I think that what you're going to hear for, through this teaching and learning highlight is a great example of taking what our district goals and the strategic plan um, goals, what it looks like out in classrooms and in schools. They're going to be talking about some work that they've done with students in the Ukraine mm -hmm. and how they have reached out to them and learned from them and the Ukraine students learning from our students. But what I'd like to do is just take a minute to go back to our strategic plan. So when we think about our strategic plan, the first objective, which is to develop responsible global citizens and provide dynamic learning experiences within a rigorous curriculum that fosters high levels of achievement for all students. The third goal under that objective is to provide curricular opportunities and programs that inspire global awareness mm -hmm. and build cultural competencies. So what you're going to hear this evening from these fantastic Foxborough High School students that are so creative is how they're meeting that goal. And it's a, what Ms. Arcacha has done is it's a way of teachers and department heads really taking this document and seeing it as a living document. How do we in the classroom meet these goals? When we look at the strategies of increasing opportunities for students um, to really create and participate in learning experiences which will build their own cultural competencies. This evening is going to be a great example of what you're going to hear. And I would like to invite Ms. Arcacha up along with our students and I'll have them introduce themselves a little bit more and tell you exactly what they've done, which is very exciting. I also had the opportunity as they're moving up um, to sit in when they talk about one of the experiences with their work. It's exciting to see the collaboration and the critiquing that they're able to do with each other and one of the projects that you're going to hear about. So I know that they'll expand on it, but it really is um, a wonderful <laughs> example of how we are stretching beyond Foxborough. So thank you so much for having us here. We're very excited to be here. I'll let them introduce themselves. So I'm going to start, Nick. Uh, I'm Nick. I'm a junior. My name is Shana Sullivan, and I am also a junior. I'm Megan, and I'm also a junior. I'm Emma, and I'm also a junior. I'm Caroline, and I'm a junior as well. Oh, great. We have them for another year. <laughs> Excellent. So all of these students are members of the senior rank class, which means they're our most advanced level of graphic design students. Um, so I can give you a little bit of background of this project and then I'm going to let them take it away from there. 
So the way this came about, Dr. Barreros was talking about goals and implementing goals. Um, and I was very much aware that at the high school and in the district, we're looking to promote global citizenship. So I you know, put a couple of feelers out to different organizations. One of them I put out to was the Peace Corps. And the Peace Corps runs a program called Worldwide Schools. Uh, Worldwide Schools uh, connects US classrooms with Peace Corps volunteers in different parts of the world. So I went onto their website. I gave a little brief summary of what we do in Senior Inc. I said, is anybody interested in their community, either for a branding identity project or for um, iconography, anything that can help out the communities? Um, we waited for about a month, and then in September, I got a letter back from Madison Underwood, who is from originally from Pennsylvania, but now is a Peace Corps volunteer in the Ukraine. She works with high school students in the Ukraine, and in the Ukraine, that's ninth grade through 11th grade. And she said that they were um, writing a grant at this time to create a youth center um, in the Ukraine, and they were looking for some identity and branding help with that. So that's where our students came in. So I can talk to you about just a little bit about Senior Inc. Um, and how we take big problems like this. So what we do is I'll bring the project to the students the Senior Inc. class, the curriculum is very um, different every single year. We get different clients. And again, this year I wanted to branch out to a global client base. So having the students empathize with a completely different target audience where they might not speak the same language, they have a completely different culture than these students do. So the way we handle big projects like this um, and big just um, challenges is through design thinking. Design thinking has been around since about the 60s, but it's become big recently through IDEO, who works with different companies where they use creativity to <coughs> solve uh, difficult challenges. So they start with empathizing with the target audience, then defining what the challenge is, coming up with sketches, so they're brainstorming, then coming up with a final based on those sketches. They send that final to the clients, and then they get reviews back from the clients, and they keep going from there. So it's a whole different cycle that they use to solve problems. I like the word ideate. Mm -hmm. New word for me. This is good. <laughs> Um, so this project was really different for us. Most of our projects and clientele, like our clientele base, is pretty much local. Um, if it's not Foxborough, it's not far from Foxborough. Um, so we know our audience pretty well. Most of the time it's our peers, it's our fellow students. So this time we had to really research our target audience because in order to provide a good product, we have to understand them. So initially, right off the bat, we decided we had to learn more about Ukraine as a whole and kind of like where they were politically. So initially we researched that a little bit. And then as a group, we all got together and we brainstormed two lists of questions. One about um, the logo and what they wanted, um, what they wanted to be incorporated within it for the youth center. And then another one just about their personalities and like their interests so we could get to know them on a more personal level because we needed to form some sort of relationship with them. Um, so that's how we got to know our target audience. Uh, as an idea to get to know them better and to get to know what they do on a daily basis, I shot an idea out as to make a video about our day in the life so they can see what we do at school and in return we can see what they do. So at first they sent us a video, we watched it, and then we got together as a group and we decided what we were going to record after asking the teachers for permission and we basically recorded everything we did at a day at FHS and then that was my part of the whole project was to edit this video and get it done and then we sent it out to them and it was just cool to see what they do and how different their world is compared to ours. How many of you are on this team? The five of you, or are there more? There's more There's of more. us. There's, There's nine. Four. Nine yeah, and there. all? Yeah. Thank you. So in order to oh. come up with the design for the uh, youth center in Romney, we first uh, split up into groups so we could work with people on our design team. And in those <coughs> groups, we use the notes that um, the Romney uh, school provided 
for us, like for example what they wanted to see included in the logo, like the colors which were like blue and gold and they wanted to see their Ukrainian symbol as well included in the logo. And uh, we were designing for their youth center which is um, to be used for like ecology purposes so they wanted to see like maybe if there would be a way to include like ecology stuff into the logo as well and um, then once we were finished like doing our logo we ended up like sending off the logo to them in a PowerPoint and um, yeah and then in addition to when we were brainstorming we uh, did a lot of sketches so we could get like a lot of ideas and then our uh, classmates could give feedback as well so we could kind of figure out like what we want to use our logos and stuff. Um, so these are just some of our logo options, some of the ones we came up with. So we have the logo and then we also provided what it would look like on certain um, like stationery and notebooks so they get a visual on how it would print. So these are some of our some of the designs we came up with. Each one, each group, we worked in partners and each group came up with very different takes on how they incorporated um, all the aspects that the Ukrainians requested. Came out really nice. Um, and then finally, Bryn Gilbert and I, we drafted a letter and an email to send to the Ukrainian students along with all of our logos and branding options. Um, but the drafts we sent, they're only first drafts, so we're basically waiting for a reply and revisions we can make. So once we get that back, all the teams, like all our groups, will go back and make all their revis revisions necessary. Um, and we'll send out another draft and see what we get back from that. So, it's a process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one of... So, sorry. One of the other, why don't you talk a little bit too about um, as far as the criteria with the technology that you were using and what you had to think about when you were designing the logos. Yeah, so here at Foxboro, we have really advanced technology when it comes to graphic design. We're really fortunate. And one of the major points that they made in um, their request was they needed to be able to redraw the logo. Mm. So with that like in mind, we had to keep our designs really simplistic so we had to use basic shapes and basic fonts in order to keep it simple and not overcomplicate it. That way they could reprint it and hand draw it for like posters or um, marketing purposes because they don't have um, access to the technology that we have. So that was a major um, component we had to keep in mind. Yeah. Chris, what were you going to say? Um, that was kind of what I was going to ask. I would add one other part to it. Is there another step once they choose the logo that they like? Is there a second part to it? Or do they choose the logo, the happy, and it goes from there? <coughs> um, is there any more branding for them that you'll be doing? Well, we, we don't know yet. So okay. so that's that's the fun part is this whole collaboration. It's kind of like an evolving project. I mean, even Seamus' idea for the videos, which was awesome, and now they're talking about having a conversation back and forth. So let's have another question and then answer through videos back and forth. So it's all just been evolving. So um, we've talked about we are going to send them, obviously, the logo as a, a file that they can use on anything mm -hmm. for promotion. Um, but we've also talked about doing like video work or doing advertising work for them, so whatever they need help with in promoting the youth center. And one of our mid, because for our midterm, we have two option assignments. Both, um, both involve pitching one of our projects. So one group in the class is working on a pitch for the youth center. So if for some reason they needed to use that, they always have access to that project we're doing. Well, that's great. <clears throat> Was that the end of your presentation? Yes. yes. Okay, so we can ask you more questions then? Dina. Well, I, I, it's more of a comment. I, I'm glad I don't have to choose because all of the logos look really good to me, so I'm, I'm glad I don't have to decide which one to pick because they're all fantastic. And my second comment I wanted to say is, is I'm thinking back to six years ago when we did not this current strategic plan, but the one preceding it, and we were just starting to talk about global connections, and it was really hard 
to call out, you know, what is that and how is it going to play out? And I, I think this is exactly what we envisioned without knowing that that's what we wanted. But this is just great and amazing and such a wonderful um, thing that you would go and look for the connection and then your students would just take the ball and run with it. It's fantastic. It's really impressive, you guys. And, you know, I think it's, it's, it is. It's precisely what this it's what the, the strategic plan before this envisioned and what this plan is 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 focused on and headed heading towards and it's just great to see it in practice. So thank you. And there's been things that we haven't even I, I didn't even expect like the um, a lot of them are, are Instagram friends now with a yeah. bunch of the students in That's the Ukraine. Nice. So their English must be pretty good. Yeah, <coughs> we're like all pretty impressed with their like because we see it in the videos and like conversations between us like because we are like social media friends now. Yeah. So we've all talked and like we've had conversations and it's really impressive, their English. Yeah, they're definitely really talented at speaking mm -hmm. like other languages. Like yeah. it's such a big part of their culture to learn other languages. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they're really good at it. <laughs> well, geographically, the U.S. is pretty isolated. And if it weren't for a few immigrants coming in, we wouldn't know other languages or even be aware of them. And over there, the languages are all around. You know, you go and buy a DVD, and you have a possibility of 17 different languages you can listen to it on. It's just part of their world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah please. I was wondering what surprised you most about the day in the life of a Ukrainian student versus a day in the life of a... I can take a guess. <laughs> uh, it was crazy to see how, like, not colorful their school was. It was really, like, uh, I, I want to say depressing. Like, really? Very cold. It, yeah, just very cold feeling. It looked like it from the pictures, the way it's all. Yeah. It, it looked very yeah, institutional. Really. Yes. Yeah, also, too, they uh, don't go to lunch. They usually just, like, grab... I think, coffee. yeah, coffee in the morning, like in the cafeteria, and, and then the rest of the day, I think that they just like have snacks and stuff to keep them filled up, and then they how go long, home. When, how long of a day? Uh, yeah. Um, when do they go, when eight, do they start and go home? We only found yeah. out that it was like eight classes a day. Right. And they go to school, um, I believe, on Saturdays oh. as well. Yeah. So it's fascinating. They go to school a lot there. Yeah. <laughs> do they go yeah. year round? No. no, no. But like one of the things we talked about was how they wanted to know how mm -hmm. we like prepared for like big exams, mm -hmm. so like midterms and finals and stuff. So like we were saying how on midterms and final days we have half days. <laughs> they go to school on weekends <laughs> to prepare for theirs, <laughs> oh. but we have half days. So it's just like the crazy like contrast. Yeah, definitely. So when do they start in the morning and when do they go home? I'm not sure. Oh, you better ask that the next time. <laughs> yeah. Instagram. Yeah. Your school committee is. Very interested. <laughs> but the time difference has been big too, yeah. and they're trying to text them. Right. They have to calculate what, is what the time, time difference. Seven. They're seven hours ahead. Yeah. So that's definitely a factor in our communication. That could be hard. Mm -hmm. So in third grade, when you learn to lapse time, see it's coming in. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Right. Same. Real world. Application. Are you reverting back, <laughs> Allison? <laughs> So is it safe to say that you guys know a little bit more about Ukraine than you did prior to this project? Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good. It's fantastic. I want to um, piggyback on what you said about the technology yeah. from that first one, mm -hmm. not the last one, the one before. Um, and I've been very familiar with the art department and Kelly Akasha, and I just have to say it over and over again. We've always been known for our music department. Now we are known for our art department. Mm -hmm. and I've watched it grow incredibly under your direction. Yes. And um, this is just so impressive, and it does cover the global citizenship that we've been struggling for. <laughs> we've been struggling to f figure out what the fit is for this, and this is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. I can just, there's endless possibilities with this. This is so impressive. You guys are learning from this in so many different ways other than art. So I love the collaboration. Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm grateful that we're able to learn about, like, different cultures and stuff just yeah. through art. That's pretty so, neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're going to be discussing our, our capital <laughs> improvement plan request as well. And this is just a perfect example of why we keep, you know, we're, we're putting money into our technology for our students. And it's just one other awesome way we're using our educational technology and keeping it, you know, updated and, mm -hmm. and improved throughout. So thanks for the example. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. Very impressive. It's also crazy. I'm dating myself, but... 
you know, I, I, uh, I'm just thinking about the world, the whole, the global situation and the world situation. I was going to high school. We were in the middle of the Cold War. It was, I mean, never mind the technology, but collaborating with the Ukrainian or Soviet, that was never the would Soviet have Union it. then, was just unthinkable. So it's just such a different world, and it's just wonderful to see you guys being able to, I mean, I was in college when the Berlin Wall fell and all that. So it's, uh, this is awesome. I, I'm not being eloquent, but it's awesome. Thank you so much. I just may I add one other piece too. Sure. I had the opportunity to sit with them when they were critiquing each other's logos. Mm -hmm. And the critical feedback that they mm -hmm. give to each other, talk about a skill to be able to provide that oh, feedback, yeah. to be able to take that feedback, and to really then implement and apply mm -hmm. what you've learned from your peers mm -hmm. is a really important skill that mm -hmm. they're going to have going forward no matter what they end up studying and doing going forward so there's as you were saying kelly there's so many other pieces here mm -hmm. it's there's so much that's really embedded in a project like mm -hmm. this Absolutely. that's true usually critiquing doesn't start if, if you were to say in the art field it starts in the college level so you guys are going to be nice and strong if you continue forward in this in this um, field. Yeah, they've been critiquing since freshman year. That's, yeah, that's yeah. unheard of. Since when? You know, you know that. Yeah. <laughs> you know from your background that mm -hmm. that's, you don't But start that's also teaching you how to observe. Mm -hmm. Very. And see what careful. works and what doesn't work. Very, very impressive. Anything else? <clears throat> Thank you guys for coming in and sharing your uh, experience. And Kelly, great job initiating it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. Thank good you. luck, guys. Done, yeah. Everybody can leave except Seamus, who has to stay for the entire meeting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs>
four uh, percent. We're looking at a um, you know a relatively stable staffing, um, and obviously, uh, as this is the last year of the current three-year contract, uh, the only contracts that will be up for next year uh, are the custodial and maintenance contracts. Um, so, and obviously, we've tried to recover for what we think we'll um, negotiate through on that. But the um, overall, we think this is a fairly stable budget, um, mm -hmm. considering where we have it. It is the smallest increase we've had um, <coughs> over the years, but uh, it's still a very large budget. Obviously, it's uh, 34 million uh, and change. So, mm -hmm. I didn't know if there was quite honestly. We had, you know, we put a lot onto the, the committee. Obviously, the subcommittee had also looked at it previously, but. Um, I didn't know if there was any other questions that came up uh, on the committee side uh, that you'd need some further detail on or if there was any comments uh, or concerns with any of the staffing positions. I know I didn't uh, have any and, and um, <clears throat> I'll just offer a perspective maybe and then the rest of the committee can chime in with their own thoughts. but. Um, to me, Bill, we've done this so many times now and followed the same approach that unless there was a policy decision change, like we're going to expand services or we're going to dramatically change classroom size or we're going to make a fee adjustment or something, with, without a, a policy change, to me, this year's budget is relatively straightforward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, you did a great job explaining it last meeting about you know, the increased size and why, and uh, the fact that it is the smallest year-to-year -year increase that we've had in a number of years, and um, that we are maintaining the policies we've had. To me, it's fairly straightforward. I mean, I, I didn't come up with a lot more that I, you know, didn't understand or was confused by, or um, that the number is largely what it is, uh, based on, as you've pointed out many times, the amount of labor being uh, the driver. Uh, I, I appreciate you reminding us that there are a couple of contracts up for renewal, but it's not a big bargaining unit. Well, not Size you know, wise, no. custodial and maintenance. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you've budgeted for what you anticipate, and you have history on how best to do that. So, uh, I just view this as fairly straightforward, and not a lot of emotion or decision or debate, in, in my perspective. But I don't know how everybody else feels. Well, I think before you do that, I think to your point, uh, Bruce, the one of your key objectives has been the social emotional area mm -hmm. and, and I think that's really when we look at the staffing changes that's really what this budget's about um, you know the social worker um, again um, you know we see the need obviously um, not just on the students and the family issues that we're trying to to deal with on a daily basis um, we do have um, you know obviously some uh, tools already in our in our, our bag of tricks but you know, obviously we're getting more and more into this, these issues that we need to address. And I think that's, you know, one of the things that we tried to address in this. Um, and, I, and again, I'd be remiss if I didn't remind you that we are still looking at positions that we are cutting back on. Mm -hmm. So we've got two positions that we're cutting point, you know, two back on, on both the uh, Spanish and the art. Um, but that's based on population. Um, you know, obviously as enrollments move, uh, we're going to be fairly uh, flat next year. Actually, I'm showing this is the first year I'm showing an increase, but that's just based, as we discussed, on the amount of housing uh, starts that are going on in town. Um, but for all practical purposes, we're flat for next year. Um, but we still, again, continue to look at how does our, our population break down through all the buildings. Um, and, you know, I think, again, try to thoughtfully reflect that within our budgets, not just pass it on because, you know, we could type of thing. So. Well, to your point, I can sit here and say, you know, this is a pretty straightforward budget, but I'm not the one who's spending countless hours assembling it as your department <laughs> is and then reviewing it as I'm sure Amy is. And so I, I, I don't mean to suggest the effort's not significant, but I guess what I appreciate, Bill, is I know that you and Amy and the rest of the team look at it very carefully, you know, and so good. It, it's, it is bright and something we've said that we want to invest in this social emotional learning area. And adding a, uh, an expanded guidance position to help us in that area uh, is reasonable to me versus the alternative, which you could say, okay, we, you know, we've got all these needs in the district and we're just, this is what it's going to take. We just have to add all this. And, you know, no, you don't do that. So we're going to add one this year. We're able to offset that by a couple of position removals. And we'll, you know, take a very balanced and careful and thoughtful approach as we do every year. So it just, you know, makes 
just like having Amy and mm -hmm. Allison be able to come along makes that side of our job easy as a committee, so does your budget management. Mm -hmm. uh, so it just doesn't result in a lot of questions that I have. But how, how's everybody else feel? Well, I, I mean, I agree with what you said, and I certainly agree with everything that Mr. Eukna said. Um, you know, Marilyn and I sat down with Debbie and Amy and, and Bill uh, in early December and went through it in, in great, went through the budget in great detail. I, I, um, it's, I echo what you say uh, as far as the thoughtful, deliberate approach. When you look at the line, line by line, mm -hmm. and the the, um, the thought that goes into where the expenses are allocated, I don't even know if that's the right accounting word, but where just it is so thoughtfully prepared, and every single thing is looked at within the budget. We could spend days at this table going through it. It is that detailed. It is that scrutinized um, and it's just a, a, a tremendous job by our, our school business administrator and by the principals and the the building staff you know who turn in their budgets to bill each school's budget in the departments at the high school the department heads do their different budgets so it's, it's a very very thorough um, compilation of data and I what I found most helpful this time around is the um, staff analysis and class size analysis and um, the, the data that was just broken down really helps understand the totality of the budget, but I don't have any questions. I, I think it is <laughs> really, truly, we it's all down for a long laid time out in front of us. It is a big budget. It's a big number, but I think it is focused on student needs um, within this district, and it is a budget that is designed to provide our kids in Foxborough an excellent education, mm -hmm. and I think that's, I know that's what I want sitting at this table. I'm not going to speak for everybody else, but I think I, I could guess. That that's our goal. Well. <laughs> I think. well, I think the other thing we try to do Safety every safety. year, you know, that right. I'm sitting here thinking in my mind, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, mm -hmm. right? Which uh, I've said before at this table, which, but, you know, the, the group I worry about a little bit that we think about around this time of year every year are the seniors and sure. um, you know therefore we try to maintain a very responsible budget mm -hmm. and not spend uh, exorbitantly or extravagantly mm -hmm. but this you know this brings me back to the point about the policy right we haven't said at this table this year that we're going to expand programs <coughs> uh, that's not our goal and we haven't and we haven't nope. we we are not going to dramatically increase services um, you know what we're trying to do is maintain uh, a budget with level service of mm -hmm. right where we are and the fact that we can do it and go up only the two percent year to year I think is responsible and, and this whole process began this year with um, Randy Scollins mm -hmm. presenting mm -hmm. to the selectmen mm -hmm. and the school committee and talking about what a good financial yep. position we are in yeah, right now right. Um, so that gives me a little confidence mm -hmm. that uh, that we're staying within uh, an area that is going to be comfortable for the town going forward. So I, d I do think we, we try to be smart. We try to balance right. the, the goal of the, the parents and the students with the needs of the rest of the community within Foxborough, and I think that's the fine balance we always strive to achieve. Absolutely. I'm doing a lot of talking. Other thoughts? Um, yeah, I don't mean to nitpick on this, but back to the athletic uniforms that we talked about last time. Mm -hmm. I understand the pre the goal is that every three years the teams will be getting new uniforms I believe it's every four years every four years okay yeah. is that price part of do we have a contract with the uniform company yeah. like, like Adidas or Nike yeah we looked at that last summer <clears throat> and to be honest with you um, first of all you you're committing to a lot of different things as far as kind of branding of, of their product uh, throughout your school district. But when we looked at the discounts and being locked into only one brand for all sports, um, we saw some real negatives and, and there, wasn't a, there wasn't a price value, which was kind of surprising to us because we looked at if we went out to four or five different um, you know, branding units and said, okay, basketball, we can get a better price to work with these uniforms and the quality is, is what we want. Football, this, this company does much better uh, than the other. We had that freedom. If you get into a branding relationship, basically what you're saying is you are not going to buy from any of these other groups. Um, and it does, so therefore, in, in effect, it costs you because now you're kind of locked in and you're locked in for a period of time. And 
my opinion as a taxpayer as well as being the budget side of things is I don't typically like purchasing agreements that lock me into a sole vendor mm -hmm. um, and I lose my capability of bidding against others. I will do it on service contracts because those are value-based and, mm -hmm. and it's labor-based. So obviously I know those are going to go up over time. So trying to lock those down is a good thing. Um, but I think Rich uh, Cormier did, did a great job uh, because I challenged him with that same thing. It's like, you know, it, aren't we better off if we go with a company? And, and he went out and he had to do this, the, the research on the whole process. And we both sat down and ba basically said for the what we could see as a very, very insignificant value in the first year, we thought we were kind of locking ourselves in um, and potentially having problems going down the road. So the, the, the savings isn't, isn't no, significant? No, no, it wasn't at all. I mean, they, they give you the first year discounts, a pretty decent discount. Of course. To get you in. You and, in. <laughs> but they tell you right up front the second and third year discount. And <laughs> it's, it's just not there. So, and again, you're not going to be able to buy everything in the first year. So you're going to be in that rotation. Mm -hmm. uh, so you get one quarter of that great discount. Okay. Nice to know. Good question, though. I mean, it's, yeah, you know, again, we, we tried to do that exact yeah. same thinking because when, when we, when Rich was uh, tasked with coming up with how was he going to manage this whole process, um, it, it was the first way we went <clears> to look at it. Let's yeah. say, you know, let's go out and get somebody else to just give us Be a better price. Be easier to have right. mm -hmm. have one person. Oh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Just what do you got for football? Yeah. <laughs> Type of thing. So. Some other comments or questions? Okay. I think we're uh, comfortable, Bill, with where we stand today. Good job Amy, well done, sir. Anything? No, I just think so. that, you know, overall, what is it, 83% of the budget is salaries. Correct. And so when we look at not, we're not talking about increasing programs. We're looking at services for our students, and it's caseload-based. Mm -hmm. And it's state and federal mandated programs when we think about special education and English language learners. And those are the caseloads. That's where we see some of the shifts, but we've also looked at where can we take away that are not needed to the point. And we looked at mm -hmm. classes that have left, so we've um, that have been reduced at the elementary level. So we look at our specialist schedule, like last year, reducing wellness by 0.2. And really, the fine detail mm -hmm. that you're talking yeah. about it goes down. We looked at every single schedule and and um, really making sure that we're meeting the needs of the students and that we're also responding to those state and federal mandates that we have to as far as services mm -hmm. and caseloads. And, and to that point, you know, the ELL was a great example of Amy's research on, on really all the cases that we currently have. Mm -hmm. What does it take and do we have the staff to manage that? Um, you know, I think from our perspective, a, a situation like that is one of the easiest ones to defend because it's, you have so many minutes in a day, a person that can only service so many kids within those minutes, and are we able to equal what the federal guidelines or state guidelines say you're supposed to? And if you're not in the ballpark, it, you know you got a problem. Obviously, you know, you have some leeway within that, but it's not like you can say, um, if I'm supposed to give 40 minutes a day and I give 10, then I'm there. Um, right. So I think that's, you know, again, when you look at the research, that's the type of changes we're making in this budget. It's not because we just want to do it, it's because we really need to do it uh, to meet the requirements. <clears throat> Joe, did you have a question? Um, yes. Um, I'm Joe Garrity. I'm a student at Foxborough High School. And um, I was just wondering, Mr. Yukno, what positions did we say we're cutting out for next year? We have two positions uh, on the elementary level, a .2 art and a .2 Spanish. Uh, and again, that's based on number of classes within the three schools. Thanks, Joe. Good question, Joe. Bill, I didn't, did I, mean, I didn't mean to cut you off. Did I cut you off? No, the only other thing I was thinking about, and, and I know we talked about this at length, so I don't want to dwell on it, but I think it's important that we kind of keep this out there, and that is the fact that um, this budget wouldn't be even as big a change as it is if it wasn't for the reduction in mm -hmm. state and federal grants, yeah. uh, which has been on an unfortunate you know, uh, trend over the last few years. Uh, Downward trend. Yeah. When I first got here, we were <laughs> right. kind of cr creeping up a little. It was nice. We had a little bit extra that we could do with some of the things. But it, it's been going down. It's not, by, it's not due to our lack of trying to get these grants. We're still getting the grants that are available. A couple of them have just gone away point blank. Um, and, you know, things like the kindergarten grant itself was going away, which, you know, was a $50,000 hit type of thing. But when you look at overall, you know, that's costing us hundreds of thousands of dollars on an annual basis. Uh, in the last two years, we've lost nearly $400,000 in grant revenue or revolving account revenue, which part of that is obviously the In the past how many? Two years. 
four hundred thousand dollars yeah. less in two years. Yeah. And as the grant money has gone down, the mandates have gone gone right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, Bill, how do you how do you try to? Ma I mean, it's only so much you can do. But what is your thought on how you manage that? Right. If you're the public listening to that, you say, "Good gosh, you know what?" Well, I mean, we managed it in in one case. Um, Title uh, Title One had a position tied to it, um, which obviously, if we didn't have the funding, we didn't have the position. So, um, you know, we were able to cut that back. That's not always the case. Uh, like I said, you know, in in some of these situations, it's it wasn't just nice things to have. It was things that we really depend on. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, that that does you know get back into the uh, taxpayers' bracket of of having to support uh, those items. Um, as far as the revolving, obviously the town bought into the um, tuition-free uh, kindergarten um, two years ago. This will be the third year of that, which you know we said would be an additional ninety thousand dollars a year. This is the first year that we aren't collecting any tuitions uh, for that program, which used to be a couple hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to re we're relying on two hundred thousand of what we had uh, built up in that fund this year. We're okay. relying on a hundred thousand more next year. And then that uh, revolving account basically would be exhausted as well. So it's working to the plan, but it still requires the taxpayers to believe in the plan and to support that additional 90000 for the next two years uh, to get us fully funded. Well, the good news is, <clears throat> at least from feedback that, you know, I get or absent of the feedback I get, I think the town's pretty happy with how things have been going. So, you know, we have other ways we could do things differently if we ever got to that point with fees and that nature, but um, I, I only hear positive support or, or the vast majority of what I hear is positive support for how we are um, administering the budget. So I, I think they're pleased with these decisions that we're making from a policy standpoint and the fact that we've lost these grants and lost these income sources and yet are only going up 2%, I think, again, speaks to your ability to manage the overall budget and find where you can take it from and where you can balance so well and, and, and I think to what uh, was said earlier this is a, a team approach you have pretty much every administrator on the same page so it's it's not the central office it's you know um, you know the the principals and, and you know uh, department heads throughout the, the district know what we're trying to accomplish um, and understand what resources we you know feel we can um, depend on from the town and it, to your point, is not an open spigot. So um, by having everybody on the same page, it's a heck of a lot easier to get through a budget process and to understand that, you know, some years we can do things and some years we can't. And yeah. it really depends on, on what's out there. So, And we're fortunate, right, because a lot of towns are having and are going to have very difficult decisions, even with the good economy right now. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're fortunate to everybody on the same page and have the town support. So. We always thank the community for their support Absolutely. of our public education and continue to feel fortunate that we're in Foxborough where it is supported and valued. So, Anything else? Okay. Thanks, Bill. Thank you to our budget subcommittee spending hours, hours. of their time. <laughs> hours. Yeah, these, these discussions at this table can be relatively short. Uh, Last week's last meetings wasn't as short, but um, but I think it's because there's so many hours put in by so many people that lead up to these presentations that we just don't have a lot of questions. I, I will add one other thing, though. We had a great conversation with the uh, advisory committee, the um, five-member um, mm -hmm. group this time, which is, I think, the largest. Uh, it's usually around four. Um, and uh, Bernie Dumont, who is actually the chairman of the board, mm -hmm. is sitting on our committee as well, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it was a very thoughtful conversation. I think they're a, a very well-educated group relative to our public schools and, and to the town itself. Um, they asked some very good questions. Um, ironically, uh, I think maybe to your point, the numbers didn't scare them as much. Um, what they were more interested in is what are we doing and how are we producing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think at the time, um, you know, Ms. Spinelli gave a great um, layout of exactly the testing that we had just gone through and how that ranks us against you know not only public schools but private schools and not only in the country but obviously internationally um, that was more important to them um, I think in the overall scheme of things than you know the 2.6 percent we're going up it was are you actually producing something for the increase that you're yes, the, the money that you're getting from us? yeah that's exactly uh, the right they felt question. Very strongly about yeah that. exactly right that's exactly the right question right what's the return on the investment but uh, 
a little practice in case parents are listening or watching who don't have high school students yet. Uh, I invite you to come to the high school and go outside the guidance office where we post stars every time one of our students gets into a school that isn't on the list yet. And the list of schools and the stars that go up is really, you know, one small sign, but I think a very positive sign of what the return on investment is. So uh, it's, a, it's a fun time. You start to hear, you know, from this point forward through the rest of the academic year, you know, look at all the stars, look at all the school names, look what good schools our kids are getting into. It's, it's exciting. Okay, shall we segue to the capital improvement plan? I actually thought I was going to have a couple uh, guests with us, but uh, maybe they got tied up. Do you want to do donations first? Yeah, why don't we? Just Because we're running there. a little ahead. So. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, so we have, I guess, three donations. We're so fortunate as a district to have these on almost every agenda lately, it seems. I know. Um, we have uh, Meditech uh, offering a donation tonight, um, a Burrell School gift account, and in addition to the Jerry Roy Scholarship Fund. Do you want to talk about that, Amy? Sure. So the first one from Meditech is a company that's been in Foxborough for about three years. And Natalie Tevault from, there's, she's a senior manager um, for administrative services there. They have a list of um, organizations that they donate to for the advancement of technology and technology instruction. And they are donating $10,000 as their company's contribution to the Foxboro Public Schools. And this is um, a donation that is very much appreciated by us. Mm -hmm. And we're very excited to be on their list of donations um, and for them to recognize the work that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. the, the money is to be um, for a technology initiative. And I don't think we'll have any problem <laughs> finding a technology <laughs> A initiative there so um, again it's something that they've donated to us as part of their charitable contributions mm -hmm. and we are very fortunate to be the recipient to be able to use those funds for the advancement of technology and technology integration is this the uh, first donation we've had from Meditech in recent past yes, yes. I mean, I'm not forgetting something right no, no this no, is no. the first well I, I have to tell you I was so excited to see this in our package I don't know if everybody knows Meditech other than being here in town, but Meditech is a world-known mm -hmm. um, healthcare information system manufacturer. Um, I actually know Howard Messing personally, not through anything other than business contacts several years ago. Uh, but the fact that they're here, the fact that they're making a donation, adding us to their list, I, I am thrilled about. And it makes me think about reaching out to them, perhaps, Amy, and talking about what other partnerships we might have with them. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a wonderful start right, that we're most thankful for. It's a, great, it's a conversation I would love to continue to have. Yeah, so, I, so at, some, at some point when you're ready, and I know you're still unpacking boxes, but um, at some point I think we should reach out to Meditech and talk about expanding our partnership further. Healthcare information is such a big deal. Mm -hmm. right. They've been around for quite a while. We have parents in the district who are Meditech employees, quite a few. I was thinking. Um, this is a company that, you know, is a very impressive company and one that we should do more with, if, if they'd be willing. So, mm -hmm. anyway, that's my reaction. I think Senior Project comes as a, mm -hmm. a, a good example of something that they might be a, a great uh, one for, a resource for us to, to work with if, if they're so willing. Um, I know we're always looking for, you know, good partners in that area. So, uh, now that they're starting to reach out, it you know, would be nice to see if we can reach out to them too. And they're in a lot of other communities, right, uh, yes. here in Massachusetts, yeah. Yeah. so we certainly can't claim them all to ourselves in Foxborough, but to the extent that they would uh, enjoy working with us, we'd certainly enjoy working with them. So and Maybe they would participate in our STEM day that we have for yeah. our sixth grade students. Yeah. I don't know if they were on the list before, so yeah. that's something worth investigating. Yeah. Uh, would anyone like to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion to accept the gift of $10,000 from Meditech for the use of advancement of technology and technology instruction with great appreciation. I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Five zero. Thank you very much, Meditech. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And then our second donation that we had. Um, was to the Borough School gift account from Teresa Mark Todd's family. And it was for $2,500. Um, again, just supportive 
Foxborough families and community and very much appreciated for this donation that we received for the Borough School gift account. This is another one, you know, that I got excited about um, <laughs> because the Todd family, you know, they're, they're a great family. Uh, they've had a lot of kids go through our schools. Very active. Mm -hmm. uh, very active, uh, very uh, smart people, very interesting uh, technology that they're involved with, um, very giving of their time, involved with uh, parent leaders in the past, yes. and so very nice of the Todds to, uh, to make this gift. Sure is. Sure is. Uh, you know what I thought when I, I saw this donation, I mean, aside from all of the above that was said, is the connection that we have as, as parents and families to our elementary schools, because I, I know I, I know Therese pretty well, and I know how devoted she was as a Burl PTO mom, parent, and uh, I feel the same way about the Taylor School, and I know other parents who are IGO parents, but we, you know, we, we talk a lot about our three schools, and they have so many commonalities and wonderful in wonderful ways, but we really do have that attachment to our school that our, our kids went to. I know yeah. our kids went right. to the Taylor, and right. I feel that way, but this is just a very um, generous donation and really a wonderful thing for the Todd family to do. I'd like to move to accept this <coughs> check from the um, from Mark and Therese Todd, the amount of twenty thousand. I'm sorry, two thousand five hundred for the um, Barrel School gift account. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. As Barrel is mine. I know. <laughs> That's, right. That's, That's all right. right. I don't know how I didn't get that so. out when I was talking. <laughs> Thank you, Mark and Therese. Yes, absolutely. And then uh, one that just came in, the Jerry Roy Scholarship Fund. you have a copy of that I do. Well? And so Colin McDonald, this is um, a donation that is in the memory of Jerry Roy. Mm -hmm. So our department head, it was having art here with Kelly, so mm -hmm. um, he was Kelly's department head before. Mm -hmm. And it's a donation of $250 by just in his honor as a colleague and then working closely with his wife, Diane McDermott, and he wanted to make this donation in his honor to help keep his spirit alive. Yeah. Is this from him or from the <coughs> Davis companies? <coughs> um. <coughs> it's from the McDonald's. Personal check. It's, it's a personal, personal check, check from the from McDonald's. McDonald's. Okay. I'd like to move to accept the um, check for the amount of two hundred and fifty dollars from Colin McDonald for the um, Jerry Roy Scholarship Fund. A second that motion. All those in favor? Unanimous. What a surprise! <laughs> Thank you. With uh, gratitude for both. With last gratitude. Two. Mm -hmm. Thank you to Colin McDonald um, for this. Uh, <laughs> This gift, boy, I, I wish I knew Jerry Roy. Oh, he was happy. Uh, uh, <laughs> Another one that's close to my heart. This All one right. just keeps, this scholarship, scholarship fund just keeps coming and coming. It continues to grow and, and grow. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah, and just, as, just as a point of reference, it's it's now at $16,673. Wow. So How much? $16,673. Six, <laughs> Plus this new addition. No, that includes that new addition. I believe addition. he was oh. here almost 30 years. Wow. It's a long time. Did he retired uh, 2012. He was supposed to retire 2011. I, I did know. Retired 2012. He had a just didn't know him well. A lot of people don't know. If you're not in the art department, you don't know that whole hallway. Yeah. <laughs> what it's a like nice the hidden, uh, the hidden back hallway. It's true. It a is. Nice way to keep his memory alive. Isn't that fabulous? And what about these two? Um, well, those are just thank you letters. Okay. Oh, from, I didn't uh, read it. Sorry. That's okay. We approved those last time. All right. I wasn't here. I was skiing <laughs> was, was with broken foot, right? <laughs> Bill, with our music team having walked in, are you ready to go on the other or you want to do other, matter, other <coughs> matters first? Nope, we're good. All right. We were running early. It's our fault. Um, we're very efficient tonight. Yeah. So with the, with the CIP program, um, as you know, we oh. kind of have four... Um, Come on up, you can come up. We have four, uh, what I call, kind of recurring um, requests on, uh, on an annual basis. <coughs> the computer, uh, hardware, software, network upgrades at 190,000. Um, you know, again, this supports not only the schools, but also supports part of the town's uh, systems. The town puts some money in, but obviously we're running most of the networks out of, out of, the, two, out of the school and out of the police station. <coughs> Um, we have uh, the need for uh, to replace two full-size buses and, and another minibus 
um, which is a 30, uh, 27 to 35 passenger, depending on which uh, branding we get, um, and then our copier replacement. So those are the four kind of annual CIP um, budget items that we have. Um, we have two other items. Um, one is going to be the first uh, showing of it, and uh, that's why uh, Cammie's here to help uh, explain a little bit more for us. But um, and I was working for a while with uh, the music department trying to get uh, a little bit better handle on the entire equipment side of things um, just because we do have a very significant investment there mm -hmm. um, but also I've been here um, going on seven years now I've never seen anything really spent on equipment so I knew most of the equipment mm -hmm. is aging um, and while we do spend money on trying to do some repairs and stuff we haven't really spent money on investing into the equipment itself and replacing things that needed to be so Cami has, has actually taken on with her department um, the um, challenge of going through the equipment and really determining you know what needed to be replaced and um, upgraded at this point um, I will say at this at this point this is going to be one area of the band equipment uh, we probably won't be looking at anything for the next year or two but then we will have probably another uh, grouping of, of equipment that again as they go through all of it uh, and determine what is you know um, really at its useful life um, as you'll see in Canvas notes most of this equipment that we're talking about is 15 years old <coughs> obviously it's it's been out there um, you know with the students I think they've taken good care of it but it's, it's you know like anything uh, it doesn't last forever so um, I think I, I'll turn it over to Cami and they can both explain uh, what you are presenting and, and why there is one new item which is a uh, an addition to the, the uh, program uh, but again I'd rather have Cammie kind of describe why. Sure. Um, so I just want to introduce, this is Bobby Glynn. Uh, he's one of our middle school uh, band directors and music educators, but I also brought him as well because he is a percussion specialist. So he helped write up this report along with um, Donald Albro. So the, what we're requesting is coming from informed sources, which we're really lucky to have. Um, so we're essentially looking to replace our entire drum line, which you see uh, for the marching band, it hasn't been touched for 15 years in terms of total replacement. Um, and we're also looking to add a five octave marimba um, to our uh, program here at the high school. Uh, currently we have, do we have one already? We don't have one. But we don't have a full five octave marimba. The one that we're using currently or had been using for several years was actually Mr. Albro's own personal instrument that he was allowing the school to use. So That was nice of him. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so with the uh, sort of expansion of our percussion curriculum and developing uh, this is Mr. Albro, welcome. Donnie, we were just thanking you for <laughs> lending us your personal Perfect. equipment for oh. school use. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, you know, it would be used on a regular basis uh, just to support the needs of our uh, per growing percussion curriculum. Um, to backtrack to the, the drum line itself, um, we've been sort of piecing it together and over the years, but at this point it's really, we don't think that it's worth the time and energy to invest parts um, for equipment that really is failing and we're hoping that the new and upgraded equipment will also it will sound better It will look better and then most importantly really be more ergonomically better for the students when we go to For them to carry it. So essentially being a safer uh, product for them to use Do you have any questions for me about that? Or? Go ahead Chris. Um, I, I believe these are different quotes yes. from three different companies. Yep. Do you know which company you prefer? Is one quality it's, better than the other? I, unfortunately, and they may have a preference, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, because you have to go out to bid on this, it's really a low bid scenario unless you can disqualify uh, a, a equipment because of a real technical issue. So um, we may be fortunate in that they may get the one that they want um, because they like the quality of the product, but again, it, it's a whole bidding process. They do have three bids um, in hand right now, um, but obviously, you know, when we go out, we'll, we'll take a, a good look at it. Part of it will also have to do with what we do with the All this equipment product. come from one yes. vendor. Yes. So the, the Steve Weiss one is 22,482.75. Is there another piece to it? To bring it to 26? No, we. I put in 26,000 to be honest with you because while this, I think this list is fairly extensive. We always know when we go out to bid, 
you know, you tweak it a little bit and, and it's easier to, to leave a few dollars on the table and give it back to the town than it is to say we're, you know, three or four thousand short. Right, so right. Uh, these these are quotes that are, you know, preliminary at this point. They're obviously not based on going out to bid. So. Steve Weiss is our preferred vendor. Steve Weiss is the preferred one as well. So if that is the lowest one, that would be fine. Bobby and Donnie, how long should we expect percussion equipment to last? I, I see where the current stuff, Cami said, is about 15 years old, roughly. I mean, is that, is that a good life? Is that yeah. typical? Is it? I think that's a good life for the quality of that equipment when it was new, the stuff that we have now. Um, not to mention when you see what it gets put through, both the number of students that have accessed that equipment and played on it, um, and the weather, quite frankly, that that equipment is exposed to every year, many times a year. Um, you have two band parents here, the five of us, so we, <laughs> we, we've seen it. Yeah, and we've seen all it. seen it. All five of us oh, have yeah. seen it. Um, and, it's, and it's certainly possible to, to extend the life as we do just by m properly maintaining it um, and it being taken care of, which I think all of our music equipment Well, that's why it's lasted is. the 15 years with all the extremes. Right. That it's weathered right. and been handled. And to put it into perspective, uh, professional drum corps and even like highly, highly competitive high school uh, drum programs, I would say their equipment lasts a year or two. They replace it every because year. Because they just do that. But we are able to get such a longevity out of it because we, the students are taking care of it. We have staff that's knowledgeable and able to replace it. And, and we're per we think that we're purchasing items here that are going to be of high quality and really are going to, to last. So we would hope to get another 15 out of do you think new equipment nowadays, Ideally. as I'm saying, just like you look at electronics, something from 100 years ago would last 25 years, now they last like two years. <laughs> Do they have any kind of quality, um, you know? I don't think we it? can put a number on can, it. No, can they? Can the company, like why you saw whoever? Is there a warranty? Any kind of? On any, on any of it? I'm sure there's a standard manufacturer, like, you know, covers... <clears throat> a malfunction wood or something but in general if something goes we replace it's typical to replace drum heads and um, rims and things like that which is factored into our op, you know our budget that we just do just like we would maintain other instruments but this is just sort of purchasing the whole shell and unit and everything and then we will need to maintain them as as we go along which will then you know make the life of the instrument last longer I'm just saying, Does that make sense? <laughs> I guess what I'm asking yeah. is, like, usually if you buy something, say, you know, expected life off something, does that come with? I don't think that's like a. I'm not familiar with percussion. Yeah. You guys. I think those particular pieces of equipment are used in such a versatile manner. Right, and we're in the Northeast, and we've got mm -hmm. our right, issues. Right, the company, you know, no company is going to put any sort of guarantee. reasonable guarantee like that, okay. just because they don't know how it's going to be used. Right. I, I think to Cammy's point, but most of them would have a free of right. manufacturer's defect. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, if that's the problem, that's the problem. Um, you know, Donnie, when you talked about, um, you know, Weiss music, what's the, is that the advantage of the company or the equipment? That's the equipment we got quoted for was identical. Okay. From, so it's not, it's not an issue of, of the product. Manufacturer, okay. And they're all fine. Those, those vendors are all fine. Just Steve Weiss is probably the oldest and most reputable of all those vendors. Right. Have they, you guys used them in the past? I mean, yeah, I've been, so I've been buying stuff with yeah. them since I was 16. Okay. Excellent. Right. Yeah. yeah, when you ask a percussionist who do you go to, that's generally who they say. Good. It's nice that they are the little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great name. Yes. Well, one of the other things, <laughs> in, in, in yeah. obviously I'll leave it up to the, uh, the music department to determine, but the equipment that we have, um, it's either got to uh, be, a, um, if we're going to let it go, uh, it's either going to go in a trade, um, which is sometimes the simplest, uh, or go out to bid uh, because it is taxpayers' money. Um, so it's not something we can just give, get rid of, unless it's just total crap. You know, quite honestly, if it is, then it goes in the dumpster. But um, if there's any value left to the equipment itself, then we, there's a process that we have to do to get rid of it. So. Uh, just like we do with anything else, uh, but just so that you know that that's we'll, we'll obviously offer it to them and see if they have any value to give that's to right. us. And if they don't, then we'll go the other route. And, and if any of the equipment is worth keeping as a backup for anything, mm -hmm. um, then obviously I would assume that we would do that as well. Mm -hmm. I don't personally have any qualms supporting this whatsoever. No. I know how hard our music staff works mm -hmm. countless hours, uh, all sorts of weather, supporting our 
students and our instruments and our programs, which are world renowned. So, uh, my only question, Bill, would be, and I probably should know the answer to this: Why CIP? Why ask for the money in CIP versus our traditional budget? It's borderline. Typically, it's a twenty-five thousand dollar requirement. Gotcha. Anything over twenty-five thousand, you'd go through the CIP process. Um, and again, I, you know. When we're done tweaking this whole thing, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we, we end up right in that number. So rather than be, you know, playing with the number and saying we're going to try to keep it under, uh, I would rather be just up front that yep. this is where we're going. I think that's mm -hmm. so good reason. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, any other questions, or can we let Cami and Bobby and Donnie go? I, if there are no more questions, I don't want to let them go yet. Okay, go ahead, <laughs> Debbie. Thank you. <laughs> for setting such a lovely tone with your beautiful music. When we walked into Debbie's oh, party the other night, so nice. you oh, just, nice. you had the bar already <laughs> set very high for the whole evening. Thank you. That was Every, fun for us. It well, was so nice to walk into. Lovely. I didn't yeah. want you to stop. I'd have, I'd have had you any time over the DJ, but that's just my <laughs> personal preference. And then also, I want to wish you lots of luck on the 19th with your Ellington recording, and there are going to be no bells after 2 o'clock. <laughs> oh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> or, or alarms or anything. <laughs> that, that, that. <laughs> like, isn't that moved up a little bit? Hmm? Isn't the recording a little bit later, more towards the end of January, beginning of February? Somewhere? We have to go by what Ellington's dates are, So oh, okay. and then when uh, Peter Katrimus is available. So well, we sort of I'm, have this window that's like... Mm -hmm. Pretty narrow. Well, I wanted to say my personal thanks. You did a lovely Thank job, yeah, and you. good luck with that. And I also echoed to the Music Association your gratitude that you mentioned at the party as well. I just saw them. So, Joe, was your question for Miss Tadoldi and her yeah. team? Okay, yes. go ahead. Amar, what does you call it? Amar. A marimba. Marimba. So, what do you guys use the marimbas for? It's like that really large xylophone. You ever see us using it up in the front of the marching band? Up on the track, that instrument. It's like the stand where you stand, right? You stand to play it. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a xylophone, which yeah. has like the bars, but it's really big and long. We, we use, use it mallets to play. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you guys use that for um, to improve the instruction, huh? Oh, absolutely. It'll allow our students to play more music and have access to more songs, and it'll be more exciting for them. Yeah. Good question, Joe. Thank you. So you guys kind of <coughs> one, right? Yes, a smaller one. They steal his, yeah. Mr. Albro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I just, I have no questions. I completely support this. I, I have a comment. Just again, this just shows the level of detail that our department heads and our people put into their requests. They drill down into the, you know, most finite detail to give us and everything is deliberate and thoughtful. And also, this might be a good time to ask about the senior district festivals that just went pl took place. And mm -hmm. we had many students participate yep. and I heard wonderful things. And so we want to continue to keep that, that level of excellence going with the right yep. equipment. So I agree with Thank that. you. Yeah, we had 32 students accepted, which was great. the highest number we've had mm -hmm. um, in Foxborough. And we were also very successful with our junior students. But we're just really excited that the students are taking that risk and putting themselves out there mm -hmm. for that process. And then, you know, whether they get in or not, that's sort of the extra bonus mm -hmm. of, of it. But we're really excited that, that they're, they're doing this and taking on that opportunity. And, then getting to have the experience of the festival. Yeah. So thank it's you. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for yeah. bringing this forward. Okay, thanks for coming out, you guys. We'll, we'll let you know. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. coming. <clears throat> the, uh, the last item um, we discussed uh, at great. length last year, um, obviously, um, it is the completion of the um, the campus at, at Foxborough relative to the, the turf field. Um, with the addition of a, an eight-lane track, uh, bleachers, and a press box. Um, as you know, we've got the funding to do the concession stand, um, and I don't didn't have it on this. I should have uh, brought you a copy, but we do have our final design uh, oh. completed, so I'll bring that to the next school committee meeting so you can see it. Um, I think the uh, architects did a very good job um, with what you know we were going to accomplish there. Um, again, full concession stand, ticket booth, storage, uh, for the boosters clubs within the uh, concession area, separate for each of the groups that are, are 
at a season, um, and then two fairly large uh, bathroom facilities as well as uh, separate uh, individual bathrooms for, um, you know, um, changing tables and stuff like that. So um, came up very, very nice. Um, I would like to hold off. I mean, obviously, with the weather where, where it is now, we're not going to go <laughs> rushing to put anything in the ground. But, um, you know, depending on how this uh, starts to move forward, I'd like to hold off a little bit because if this looks like it's going to get some support, mm -hmm. um, I would love to tag the three projects together, uh, have only one site contractor um, and coordinate it all that way. But if it's not, then we will go forward with the concession stand um, this spring. So. It feels like that part of the project bill has slipped a little. That I, I guess I thought that was going to happen sooner. Did yeah, it, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It took, uh, between some of the other projects that were going on in town, it just took a little bit more focus than we, we had on it. That's uh, when we finally got the architectural firm, um, it kind of started moving along very well. But we, we went through a number of renditions. Uh, we actually looked at about a half a dozen different schools' concession stands to make sure that we were not missing something. Um, so yes, I actually wish it, it had been done for this last fall, um, but you know, again, uh, one way or another, we'll be ready for next fall, and um, you know, it will take uh, probably the spring time frame. If we start in the spring, it'll take all spring, so we might be ready for the summer if we go that route. But again, if you can, if you can use the same site contract to do everything, then you know the track is in the right place, you know the concession stands in the right place, yeah, because uh, they're going to be close. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be tight. Yeah, but yeah. You know. Yeah, I see the benefit of that. I uh, yep. I also uh, am anxious to see us make progress just because there are so many people who are using that space. Oh, yeah. that I, and so many people like the turf field. I think the more we can put up, even if we have to do it piecemeal, I think mm -hmm. it's important to show the progress. But that, yep. that explains the benefit of waiting. Right. Chris, did you want to say something? Uh, yeah, just when we had our meeting with the selectmen and Randy and all of them, there was one member of the Board of Selectmen that was ch kept trying to push this out of CIP and make it a, a different item at town meeting? No, she was trying to, uh, I believe, make it into a fundraiser. Okay. Um, and I, I think while I appreciate that, I, th I think the school department on a number of times has done fundraising for things like we did at the IGO Playground, uh, which, you know, in effect, um, nearly... Um, 80% of that was raised through outside resources versus town resources. Um, you know, we've done that on other field projects. We, we raised uh, around $21,000 for the concession stand. Um, but I think Debbie um, kind of eloquently put it that, you know, you can only push so much just on donations. And a project of this scale uh, really um, just like we wouldn't, you know, look to have a science wing or something else done through donations. Mm -hmm. um, this is really a campus issue. This is this is a, a facilities issue, um, and it would take us a significant period of time to to raise 1.1 million dollars. Uh, number one and number two, um, you know, in that time frame, the turf field continues to be used and and worn. And, and one of our reasons for wanting all this done is to potentially, you know, mm -hmm. bring in some money towards helping that, that turf replacement when it has to be done. Um, so, but the other four members, I think, were very supportive of the fact that the project yeah. is what it is. I mean, as far as... <coughs> they were uh, the realistic scope. about yeah, it. the scope of it, so... Yeah, it, so I remember last year we tried mm -hmm. to get it on it in the CIP, and then it, we didn't push forward. I just want to make sure it goes to town meeting in one form yeah. or the other this year so we can yeah. so people I, get to vote on it. So I think, I think what happened, well... What's interesting in the process, and the school committee, um, I guess, should understand this, maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. um, the CIP process is the CIP committee itself uh, only needs to review an article. They don't need to accept it for you to push it to still be on town meeting. Right. Um, obviously, we've always been in a very cooperative basis, but their, their charter is strictly that they have reviewed. If they have not reviewed something, it can't go to town meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but the but the reality here is last year with a number of competing resource needs, mm -hmm. uh, you know one of them being the borough school, mm -hmm. uh, which you know at seven hundred thousand was a fairly large request as well. Um, the resources just weren't there to meet what all the other departments needed as well. Um, Randy has given kind of a signal that based on the the needs that he's seen from other other uh, departments as well as uh, you know what our department requests were. 
that he believes there is enough funding within that um, you know fund this year to be able to manage this again it just it really will take the uh, the parents and taxpayers to come out and say they want to support it um, but uh, that Saturday meeting um, in March. March, March yeah um, you know, it was an open meeting mm -hmm. um, in which the, the, the group gets together to, to go down the list. And again, again, they go down based on how much money they have. So they prioritize the list and, and depends on how high this comes up on the priority list. Um, but even if they review it, don't favor it, we can still push forward. You can, you can still push to have it be a warrant it article voters. item. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, I think we've tried never to do that. We always try to be within the, the consistency, but you know, Again, I think at some point the, the taxpayers will have to make a decision whether or not they believe in this. And like you said, we want people using it so right. they can get the money. It. Right. Well, can I? Sure. Um, I just want to interject that the when we received the original two hundred thousand dollar grant from the NFL, it was for a community field. It was not for the schools. Absolutely. For right. school purpose, it was for a right. community field. And I mean, through you know, when Jim Develis came here with turfs up, and we t discussed it, this this was the ideal location for it within the community. So I think if we can get CI the CIP committee to support the project, it would be the best thing for the community yeah, as a whole. Absolutely. I mean, certainly, it's a huge benefit to <laughs> the high school and and our our school department. And I I want to see it go through. But I, I, I don't want to lose the focus that it originally was mm -hmm. a community, community. field. Well, and I think, oh, it still I, is. I, I it actually, was and is. I think you've actually raised two very good points. One's on the donation side. Jim's developed this group mm -hmm. spent a few years oh, yeah. um, doing a lot of fundraising, mm -hmm. and they came up with 65000 which was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But 65000 is a long way from $1.1 $1 .1 million. Mm -hmm. um, Deb and another group of people did a, a similar type of fundraising, which took nearly a whole year, That's and they came up with 21,000. So maybe 20 years from now, we would have 1.1 million at and those type of levels, session, yeah. um, but it, it doesn't get us to our, our end result. The other side, to your point on the community side, is at least 50% of that field use is community. Right. So while we have it after school for our athletic teams, every night and every weekend, mm -hmm. all through the summer, those, that field is used. Um, so by it, the community, it, it, by, the community right. by youth sports, by you know other organizations that are doing things. So it, it's it is in constant use um, and not just for the schools. And not just so, summer. You said summer, right. spring. No, summer, I said all through fall. the summer too. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, all, oh. Right. Yeah. 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 All, every, so we literally are going here. from the beauty of the field for us on the school side is, and, and as we saw last year when we had snow and people right. couldn't get out. We had our turf field was cleared, and we were actually able to have the athletics out on that. It was the only place you could go. Everything else was mud. Uh, <laughs> but that that was true also for the youth sports, right? Mm -hmm. Because otherwise they had no place to go either. Uh, so they came on our heels every night. Right mm -hmm. after our teams left, they came out and went out, and the lights went out. You know, at ten o'clock at night. So, um, and we ran through that whole process, and that happened from you know the end of March right through um, the end of. December basically mm -hmm. um, or middle of December at least Does so the community it, get priority over the field no, the, instead the, of uh, rentals oh instead of rentals the the yes the priority in the uh, the, the agreement is basically uh, you know the school sports first and, and like I said most of that's directly after school, school so it's not in conflict unless there's a game uh, then it's youth sports within the town and then it goes out to rental so um, rental is the lowest level as much as we'd like to rent it obviously but the taxpayers have paid for this to be used by the town itself too so that's the, the main purpose and there's also a safety factor we, we can't forget that part when we're talking about kids having to you know go over and leave the campus and not being on campus mm -hmm. so I think that's an important part to remember too by having our kids being able to have that full campus and to stay right here I was watching our track students running in the That's street so today scary. to avoid yeah. the the icy snow walk, oh, snow uh, sidewalks in the snow and uh, yes, yeah, thinking of the exact same thing. It's a huge safety. And the parking lot when you're picking up the kids. And the you parking lot when you're sitting there waiting for it's your Harn school student <laughs> to come out and you see all the high schoolers coming in driving. Oh, they used to run around this this yeah. years ago around this. Oh uh, yeah, that too. Lot. They still do. They still do. <laughs> oh, they God. still do. Used to scare the so I agree. I think yeah. the safety issue is huge. Huge. Are there any other towns that have this dichotomy of campus? 
Um, yeah, there are other towns that have their football fields away from the school, um, but the majority of the ones that we play in the league with are mm -hmm. on their own campuses. Yeah. So I believe North Attleboro, as an example, has a separate field. Um, but, and I live in that town, there's been a huge movement to get a turf field mm -hmm. for a multitude of reasons, mm -hmm. but primarily so that they can have the field on their oh, campus. Yeah, and Foxborough beats us every year in lacrosse because you have way, well, that's not the only reason, but <laughs> you also have a lot of opportunity to be on your field. We had to forfeit home field advantage several times last year because they just couldn't play in the mud. Right. So it's a nice thing to have. Yes. And then if this goes through, if we're trying to bring all the sports teams and everything here, the only thing we would need to do is locker rooms. Well, we have locker rooms at the Igo right now. Is it, it? It's a potential option down the road um, if the um, you know community feels and that, that they're you know so inclined that we could actually add uh, you know locker rooms off the side of the building here. Um, this building is actually ideally set up uh, off where its locker rooms currently are to expand. So that's you know we have the space, we have the ability. So that's really not the issue. It's a, it will be more of a you know financial issue at the time, but. At least our locker room isn't that far away, and, and a um, visiting team could use the existing locker rooms here. So we, we have the capabilities. It may, may not be ideal, but right now the Ahern's not ideal either, so um, for either team. Okay. Um, any other CIP comments, Bill, in general? No, I'm, you know, again, as you know, as with our budget, we, we look at this with the town before we even mm -hmm. kind of come out. So, I mean, I wouldn't come out with something that I didn't think the town had the ability to deal with um, because I, I'm not looking to poke anybody in the eye with it. I, I really want something that's supportable, and, and I think from your you know perspective of what you've been supporting, um, this is really something that just kind of follows right along. And, and kind of like the borough, you know, if we didn't get it the first – Two years with the MSBA, we got it the third year. Well, you know, you, you, you don't stop. You just keep trying to get it and, and do the right thing for the kids. So, I think from an overall standpoint, if you look at this list, it's a predictable list. Mm -hmm. You know, based on what we've been asking for the last few years, what you've been finding approval for the last few years, there's no <coughs> real surprises here. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I, I'm very comfortable with it. Do you anticipate it changing at all? No, actually, I don't. I, um, you know, we have... You know, if you walk in my office, you'll see there's a list on my, my whiteboard of other issues within the district um, that will need to be addressed. Um, I don't think any of them are so significant that they should be on this list as a, as a requirement. Um, as in the past, obviously, if we're fortunate enough to have any uh, funds available at the end, I would look to knock some of those off the list. Um, they are all facilities related issues based on age or uh, just need so um, I think we'd stay consistent with that and, and again you know with a little luck I'd get the worst of it off the list but I think we've been making great headway there too so um, no I, I think this is really unless you guys decide something isn't uh, or you want to add something but this would be my recommendation at this point um, I don't know if the committee feels comfortable doing this yet, but would you like a vote of approval on this now, or would you like us to hold? No, typically what we would do is have this approved at the, you know, same either time at the same the time as you do the regular budget, uh, okay. although we have a little bit more time uh, on this. You don't have the same time constraints that you have uh, on the annual budget, which has to be done before the end of the month. Okay, so very good. I'd like you to at least think about it. Like I said, if there's anything else that you think of or issues, and, you know, we can have another discussion next meeting. Go oh, well, and I don't anticipate getting feedback from the community but by holding on it mm. if has any reaction to tonight's meeting they can they can come to the next mm. meeting or they can contact any of the committee members mm -hmm. okay thanks bill thank you Doug. other matters bevy uh mentioning global outreach there is a meeting tomorrow night the ninth tuesday for the french exchange and they will be leaving on the 13th of February to complete the cycle for this year, which is always very exciting. And I just wish everybody a happy, healthy, productive New Year. Nice. Thank you. Tina? I had a couple things. Um, I saw, and I won't keep us too long, I promise. <laughs> um, 
I saw on the Foxborough BIT auction Facebook page that the final numbers for the BIT auction were in, and each school, each school is going to receive $20,433.23. That's phenomenal. That may actually be the, I, I don't know. No, we got 62 or something one year when I was at, um, Borough. We got 62,000 one year, so maybe it's been a long that's time about, since we've had that. Close, yeah, that's pretty then, close then. But, but yeah. that's phenomenal. Can you do that again, please? Twenty. It's, it said twenty thousand four hundred thirty-three dollars and twenty-three cents. And, and to be clear, that's yeah. each PTO. Each PTO. Each PTO will receive it. So you know, well over sixty thousand dollars. So it's a tremendous effort yeah. um, combined by all three PTOs to put that that's together. Awesome. So much and fun too. It's. I know. I missed <laughs> it, really it this is. year. I was double booked that. night. Night and uh, and I, I love going. It's always a, always a great time. So and it's, it's that such a many years effort. for the turf field. I mean for the <laughs> that Ray, How many years we do this? <laughs> well, the the the, um, the funds raised I from the resist. bit go to programming at the el elementary school. The so extra special programming, you know, that they oh, wouldn't right, otherwise right. have to have the opportunity to do. I was. I was a, a PTO vice president one year and in charge of booking all those programs. So it's it's just really a great thing. I wanted to mention that and thank Friday. this year's BIT auction mm -hmm. chairs and um, wish the next year's chairs good luck <laughs> because they've got a pretty high bar to meet. Um, tonight was a step up concert for the eighth grade choir. So you know we heard from our music department. Um, I wanted to say congratulations to the varsity and JV basketball team. I, I as a, had a proud mom moment getting to travel to Florida to see them play in Disney World. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, they really, the kids um, really represented Foxborough very well, both on and off the court. Nice. I have to give John Gibbs um, so many kudos for organizing the trip. Uh, I know the boosters put together a great fundraising campaign um, to support the trip, but he and his three assistant coaches took uh, 24 kids to Disney World, and, and really it was a great experience for everybody. It was a team bonding experience, and really it went as, as well as you could possibly have a, a trip go. So um, thank you to Coach Gibbs, and congratulations to all the boys. The, the varsity actually won their championship in their bracket, and the JV team won two out of three games. So That's it was a, success, a very great. successful trip all around, and I know I'm very grateful that you know my son was participating, so it was fun. My last thing is, this came in the mail. I'm sure yes, everybody saw it, the Partners in Patriotism newsletter. And every single page of this newsletter, there is something that the Partners in Patriotism, the Craft Group, and the Patriots are doing to support Foxborough Public Schools or our students personally, including Bevy. The French exchange <laughs> students visited Gillette Stadium. <laughs> but yes, they're on I, the field. It, they came in I, yesterday's mail of the day before. And, I 1982, said, I, we started that. Yay! You're on the field with them, Bev. You didn't join that. No. <laughs> Tina forgot to tell her. I think so. <laughs> at, at, um, anyway, so thank you to the craft group. It's just a wonderful. We're we're so for, we really are fortunate to have um, the, the craft group as a great community partner. And thank you to all of the Foxborough residents who serve on the PIP grant committee because that's not a small amount of time either and they really sift through um, all of the various requests that come in and give them a lot of thought. So we are very lucky. I'm not going to go through every single one, but trust me, there is a lot of um, good things that are coming from the Partners in Patriotism to, that are flowing to our schools. So thank you for that. That's it. That's all I have. <laughs> Amy. The couple things I had written down, you mentioned, I was really excited thinking about John Gibbs when he came, what was it, a year and a mm -hmm, half ago yeah. before mm -hmm. the committee and all of the planning yeah. and to yep. see the success that they had. I thought that was really exciting. Yeah. Um, and then just again, I, I wanted to personally thank all of you for your support in moving into this new role as well. So it is exciting to start a new year, but to also know that the support that I've had, you've each reached out to me individually to be there as a support, and I just really appreciate it, and the community and the teachers as well. So. But thank you to all of you for your support. <laughs> you are welcome. You'll do great things. Allison, anything Allison. under other matters? 
Well, today I really enjoyed walking around our classrooms after having two snow days mm -hmm. and a very abbreviated week last week to see the learning that was happening. And I took a bunch of pictures that I will tweet when I get home. <laughs> but I was really impressed to see how happy the kids were to be back in our schools, yeah. which said a lot to me about what we offer here. And I met a child in the store last week. Uh, I was getting the, the balloons for Debbie's party, mm -hmm. and I heard a little girl counting the balloons. <laughs> and her mom was having a conversation, and they said, yes, we use math every day. They weren't talking to me. But I had to <laughs> ask, with this. what school do you go to? And she's a kindergartner at the Taylor School. So oh, I was sure. able <laughs> to go visit her today. And now she'll only know me as Mrs. The Marshmallow, lady. the balloon lady. But that's <laughs> OK. Um, because now that's all she needs to know for now. Someday she'll know that I've just had a big jump and all of a sudden I'm the assistant superintendent. So <laughs> thank you all for welcoming me because it was fun to be in kindergarten and just feel like one of the kids today. Nice. Uh, yes. I just can't wait to see Dr. Marshmallow. Yes, me neither. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? No, that's it. Just thank you all. This was a great, it's already been a couple of days of heavy duty learning, but it's great for having my brain turned on and and be here with all of you. So thank You're a you. good learner. We're thank not going to let up for a little while either. Oh, it's good. I like it like that. That's good. Chris? I'm good. <laughs> Marilyn? Um, I just want to talk about DECA. DECA is our um, business planning um, club. I don't know how we don't, um, some schools have them as um, part of their curriculum or an after school program, which is King Philip does, so they usually win every year. But um, we have a very strong DECA team that started at the end of 2015, I believe, it was um, Mackenzie Anderson had brought it to our school, and those 70 kids that had joined. We have been competing every year and very successfully against other um, teams in the district, and our first competition is going to be this Wednesday and Thursday under the direction of Mr. McCabe, oh, and it's going to be at the Holiday Inn in uh, Mansfield. And if anyone wants to volunteer, just reach out to me or Mr. McCabe. I'll be helping out on Wednesday with the... Uh, this coming Wednesday? Yeah, it's Wednesday and Thursday. I think he needs people on Thursday. I have to do the um, sit-down one, the written one. So he's going to need some people for the stand-up presentation ones. So um, if anyone's available, he's looking for volunteers. But um, right. I will fill you in and let you know how they do. Great. I'm very excited. It's, 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 it's grown. It's, it's, we're very competitive now, and he's done a great job of this. I mean, yeah, it really the, it's a fabulous thing I mean, to watch. They, they've gone from there to there Except, exactly. in such a short time. Mm -hmm. The kids went it's to the incredible. Nationals last yes. year. I mean, just, I mean, they they really went right. the year before, too, because yeah. they went to Tennessee. Oh, that's right. Because um, Matthew was part of that group. And um, actually, they went met to Debbie's uh, nephew. They were saying there was two funny kids. Remember um, Conniff and Matthew were sitting in here? Yeah. Right. And they had met <clears throat> Debbie's Penelope's, um nephew she, and he said he was so impressed by the Foxborough team and there was two really funny kids there and the, those two turned beat red in the audience <laughs> so yeah we've done really really great things with it and I, I hope it keeps on growing it's a um, great thing that they do in college level and I've actually volunteered to um, judge at the Bentley before because my husband used to go there and Matthew just competed in the Northeastern one and won the first inaugural one so great. yeah great. so that he got good foundation here Again, our Fox Hill School System. Mm -hmm. right. So, can I do one more quick little thing? <laughs> the minute, the minute uh, I hung up my phone from the robocall, <coughs> there's no school Friday. Oh. I texted Amy, but not Debbie's party, right? That's still on. <laughs> <laughs> and I immediately received the response, yes. <laughs> but so, <laughs> the minute I, I texted her. And I want to congratulate you for um, successfully getting through your first snowstorm. It was an easy call, though, so <coughs> we need you to have a challenging one. I'm good with, I'm <laughs> no, good with warmer no, you don't. days. No. <laughs> Temperatures are rising at the end of the week. <laughs> yeah, up to 50. Well, some people put their shorts on today. It was such a relief. <laughs> from feel good out there. Sub-zero weather. <laughs> Marilyn, anything else? That's it. That's Still? all I've got for you. I'm good. Janet? All set, thank you. Okay. Um, I'd like to move that we. Oh, the only thing I was going to say, real quick, no school a week from today. Yeah. Martin Luther King. King. No school Monday. Is Friday? No. Is that Beltman or No, that's not until January 26th. Okay. So no school so Monday. So ignore me. And uh, finally, rumor has it you may have set a Massachusetts superintendent, assistant superintendent record. What? Why? Fastest 
snow days in the <laughs> earliest part of your term. It has led to an all-time popularity spike. Wow. I don't know if you're aware of Who this. Who knew? No, yeah. good to know. Always. No, I'm joking. <laughs> What was that motion you wanted to make, Bevy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that we conclude our meeting, please. Good I'll second be that. adjourned. <laughs> no, I, I. All those in favor? Oh, yeah. Aye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.